So you've probably heard about the Stanley Cup. I'm not talking about the NHL Stanley Cup. I'm talking about the Stanley Tumbler Cups. Now this is the Quincher H2O Tumbler, the 40 ounce variant. This is a very popular model. In fact, this color I see all over the place as well. So what is a Stanley Cup Quincher? Quincher model, what is this tumbler cup? Well, it's just a very nice painted mug. Actually, the handle and the construction of this are very nice as well. It's got a lid on the top and it comes with a straw and uh, everything here can disassemble. So you can take the straw out of it. You can even take this lid apart so you can get under things and clean it. And I think that's a really good uh, thing to do for Stanley. Now, inside the cup, there is a stainless steel liner that Stanley has been known for, which doesn't corrode or rust and keeps your beverage hot or cold for a long period of time. That's all really good. But where the claims have been made recently is that this cup contains high amounts of lead that could contaminate you or your children. So let's investigate the cup and see what it's made out of and see if there's any validity to those claims. Let's get right into it. So, okay, so in closer inspection, let's take a look at our Stanley cup itself. We can see that there's some metal screws that hold the handle on. We can also see that the interior is a nice stainless steel material, looks very clean and nice. And then the bottom bit, which I've actually already removed the bottom button, this is what all the controversy is about. This little button here, which we'll have to test with our handheld XRF. And then underneath here, that little black dot you see in the middle, that's where the leaded material is used to seal this. Now, how did this thing come apart? How did this button come off? I actually pried this button off of this cup. You can see three areas where there are tack welds. So they actually tack weld this piece on. This is a metallurgical joint. So uh, to remove this, I did use a screwdriver and pry it off, but it is not something I expect to come off. And Stanley has a lifetime warranty on these mugs, I believe. So they, they do recommend if it does come off, you just contact them for a replacement. So if that ever happens, I would just contact them for a replacement. But for the sake of this video, you can see that you can remove this bottom button and there is a sealing hole, a sealing dot as it's called, on the bottom of the cup. Now, the other components of this cup, they don't have any metal to them, so we're gonna set those aside. We don't really need those for the rest of this video, but we need to take a look at the metals that are in this cup. So, let's get our handheld XRF. Okay, so we've got our handy handheld XRF here. This is a Niton XL2 Plus by Thermo Scientific. This is a handheld XRF analyzer that will do alloy content in metals. It is not set up to do consumer goods, but we are dealing with metals here. So let's take a look at the metals and see what we can find. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to know is let's take a look at this button here. Now I've already pried this off uh, off camera so that you can see what it is. You'll see three areas where there's probably a tack weld going on. And if we look under the hood here on the back side, we can see see that, yep, yeah, we've got two tack welds that took, but one that didn't. And Stanley may want to take a look at their quality control process so this part doesn't fall off where the lead concerns are with their, with their mugs. We'll get into whether or not that lead is a concern here in a minute, but this is just looking at this overall piece. Now, we can put this right back here and just shoot this with our handheld XRF. So what we're going to do is we're going to approach the handheld of XRF to the sample just like this, and we're going to hold the trigger down to do an analysis. And you'll see that real quick, we've got a match for 304 stainless steel. Now, to look for other grade matches up top here, like 303, we would look at some other alloy content, but this is likely a simplified version of this alloy, which is just chrome, nickel, and iron to have less alloy content and make it less expensive, but still give you that nice stainless steel. But at, uh, Stanley does not, I don't believe they advertise this as a 304. I believe they advertise this as an 18.8. You see 18% chrome and just about 8% nickel. Numbers are never gonna be exact, but you can see that that is exactly the alloy that they're selling you, that they're saying they're doing in their cup. So that would give you performance just like a 304 stainless steel, which is what we see with the analyzer. Now, you'll also notice we didn't see any lead there. So there's no lead contamination on the back of this button. This is just a little button of 304 stainless steel or 18.8 stainless steel that is sealing the cup itself. So so down here on the handle, you'll see these screws that hold on this plastic handle. And what you'll also notice is that there's a painted bracket underneath. I'm not gonna go into the detail to test that today. That is very difficult to get to and it's painted. So it's gonna be a little difficult to analyze as well. And I doubt there's any lead in it. There'd be no reason for them to put lead there. This is a little screw here, likely a stainless steel screw. I'm gonna do a method off camera and I'll show you the analysis when we do that. So give me one second. Um, and this is gonna remove any noise or variation in the data when we're looking at this material. Okay, 
I've done a quick XRF reading of this little screw here, and this is what we get. Chrome, iron, nickel. We see that 18.8, but we're also picking up copper content, which is not normal for these other grades. Uh, it may be something they add to the process to help make these screws. Um, that is something I don't know. So if you know something about adding copper or the alloys or grades for this material, please post that in the comment section down below, but that's not gonna hurt anything. We don't see any lead contamination or issues with the screws used in the Stanley Cup. So now let's get into the, uh, the money maker here. So in the bottom here in the middle, we can see that black dot. Now that's the sealing, that's where they, where they put a sealing dot, which is gonna seal the um, outer layer uh, of the stainless steel of the mug. And that's going to make it hold, uh, keep hot liquids hot and cold liquids cold for longer. So that's part of their secret. And a lot of tumblers have a sealing dot just like this one made out of similar material. So if we use the camera, we can align the ceiling, the center of that dot. Now we're gonna get a little bit of stainless steel background interference here. So if we just wait a second, all right, we've got a simple chemistry in just a couple of seconds. You'll see we've got chrome, iron, nickel, copper, zinc, and PB is lead. And we are over 40%, almost 50% lead in that center dot. There is definitely lead there. Uh, and it's kind of hard to tell based on how uh, our dot actually, our spot size for our handheld XRF is actually bigger than this dot. And we end up hitting some of the stainless steel on the outside. So we'll need to do another analysis technique. I don't have a small spot with this handheld XRF, which you can get um, in your handheld handheld XRFs to do things like electronics and consumer goods. I just don't have that functionality in this XRF, but you can definitely see, hey, that lead content is definitely there in a high amount right underneath that button that was tack welded on. So we know there's lead there. The center of the mug is actually made of a stainless steel. They claim this is 18.8 as well. We have no reason to doubt what Stanley's been doing there. So, you know, the mug looks really nice. And, um, I think that it's likely we won't see lead contamination here as well. So what I'm gonna do is use the camera and just shoot this upper ring here. I don't wanna shoot any of this painted surface. I just wanna shoot the upper ring and then I'm gonna hold the trigger for just a couple of seconds, which will give us exactly what our match is supposed to be, a 304-like stainless steel. We have chrome at about 18, nickel at about 8%, and that is an 18.8 alloy, just as advertised by Stanley, with, as you see, no lead. The LEC down below is light element content, um, or actually I think it stands for light element correction, but without using the light element beam, um, we're not looking at light elements. Lead is a very heavy element, and that would not be included in the LEC. So that's it for the first part of this analysis. Let's take a little bit of a deeper dive and take this cup apart some more and see what else we can find. Be right back. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got a pair of Alloy Geek safety gloves. These are level three cut resistant gloves. Excuse me, they're level five. And I wear them because you can see all the jagged edges on here. I cut this in half with an angle grinder so we could take a look at this Stanley cup and what's inside and if there's any more lead contamination. Now, if you look at the front of the Stanley here, it looks pretty good until you turn it to the side and you see, whoa, we cut a big hole in it. That's by design. You can see the two pieces of what appear to be stainless steel that uh, make up the uh, insulating air gap in this material, or in this uh, tumbler. And then on the bottom, we have the, the bottom of the tumbler itself that I removed. On the back side, you'll see some copper material. I believe this is plated, but we'll take a look at that with our handheld XRF and see what it is. Now here is the actual very bottom. This is the interior bottom, so these two pieces stack like so. This is the very bottom of the mug with that little black dot in the middle being the lead contaminated piece we saw earlier. There's something else tack welded here. I'm not actually sure what that is. If you know what that is, comment down in the section, comment section down below and let me know. Um, but we'll take a look at the entire construction to see if there's any more lead that we can find. The first thing we need to do is let's actually, we already tested this outside ring on the Stanley. Let's test this piece here that I've bent upwards so we can get both the outside and the inside piece along with the weld seam to see what's there. So. Let's take a look here with our handheld XRF. Actually, let's get a little bit of a, a better angle here so we can get a good result. It shouldn't take but just a second. Okay, so what you'll see here is that we have um, no lead being detected. We see the chrome, iron, and nickel content with some light element correction. That's just gonna probably be silicon, maybe carbon content within those numbers, but we don't see the lead like we saw earlier. So what we need to test here is down here, a nice clean spot on that inner liner. This is part that's not in contact with your beverage. 
And what you're able to see really quickly is that 18.8 material with no uh, contamination again. How about the weld seam? We have lead in the joining process down here. How about the weld seam otherwise? So we're gonna use the camera feature itself to target the, the weld seam. And if there's lead there, we're gonna see it. So for just about a second, we're able to see this is a, th a 304 type 18.8 um, material and there is no lead contamination here. Now, you're gonna be able to see that there's that copper backing, but we have that on the back of the bottom piece as well. So let's just give that a test real quick and see what that looks like. So we're gonna do a quick test and it's probably not gonna give us a grade match because we have a plating going on, but you can see we're picking up that high copper content from the plating there as well. XRF is great, has fundamental parameters that mean you do, that means you don't need big calibration, um, empirical calibrations in order to get re repeatable results. How about this bottom piece of the tumbler, which could be made from a different part? Um, I'm not sure, but we're not gonna risk it. We're gonna test it today, and we see 18.8 again, 304 type stainless steel. Um, so everything we see here, we are not seeing any additional lead. How about the inside of the bottom of this tumbler? Not the center piece, not that little funky piece in there, just the inside here, okay? And what we see is 18.8 material again, chrome, iron, and nickel, pretty standard. Now you'll notice there's no moly in this. Typically we see some molybdenum, which is not an element of concern. It's actually in most of the stainless steel, like 304 and 316. It's in a higher content in 316, but we don't see any in this material. It's typically not used where they're looking to reduce cost and something like this really doesn't need it. So now let's turn that camera back on and we're gonna be able to look for exactly that dot right in the middle, okay? So you should be able to see that on your camera on the screen a little bit. We're testing just the middle of the dot. Now the middle of the dot on the inside of the actual cup itself is actually a smaller footprint. So when we look at that, we're seeing less lead here because we're shooting less of that area. And without a small spot, I'm not able to target and get the exact alloy for that, uh, for that little dot there, for that ceiling dot. Okay, so we know there's definitely lead on this side and there's definitely lead on this side, right at that center black spot. But what is this weird little thing that's been tack welded on the inside here? It's just kind of floating there, right? So that's kind of an odd piece to go there. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna align the analyzer again with the, and take the best result we can get of that little dot. I'm right on it right now and we're gonna do a test. Now. This result is probably gonna be a little bit funky. This could be a magnet. This could be something like an anti-static piece so the mugs never shock you. I don't know. If you know what this little piece is, please comment that in the, in the, in the comments down below. But you'll see here, we're running up with some vanadium and looks like some hafnium. Not sure if that's a false positive or not, some zirconium. I'm not sure what this what this material is actually made out of. It does not appear to be metallic. Um, it could be, um, maybe it's a microphone from China. I'm kidding, I don't think it's a microphone from China. These are made in China, by the way. Um, they say ethically manufactured, but Stanley, we'd really like to see you bring this production back to the US. It doesn't cost you any more to make your products here in the USA. And uh, I think a lot of people will be proud to have them made within the USA. So that's about it. All these components, the only lead that we've seen here is in this bottom bit of the uh, of the Stanley cup here, this black dot right in the center. And that's just the ceiling dot, which is sealed with actually a, a weld, a tack weld, those three welds you see, that's supposed to hold this part in place. Stanley does say, or has said, that they will replace um, anything, any mugs where the little dot in the bottom, the ceiling dot actually comes off. Um, and I don't believe that this is a really high source of lead contamination. So at the end of the day, yes, your Stanley mug has lead in it. Uh, but no, it's probably not going to hurt you. It's not in any con any surfaces that you would typically come in contact with. In fact, it's actually welded in place, uh, sealed in the bottom of the mug. If your bottom button does fall off, Stanley, I believe, will replace your uh, mug for free, but it's really not something to be concerned about. So anytime you're working with metals, you're gonna wanna wear safety gloves. These are cut resistant level five gloves from alloygeek.com. You would be able to work with any metal without having a big fear of cutting yourself. I used an angle grinder with a diamond bit to cut this Stanley mug into pieces and it has very sharp edges on it. So if you're gonna replicate anything in this video, please make sure you wear the proper, proper safety gear and protect yourself. Thanks for watching today. If you guys learned something, hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.